All right, guys, well, uh, I'm pretty sure my microphone just broke, and I just recorded for no reason, and I'm really irritated. But yeah, I'm Abby with More Sander. It's hi to all the new subscribers. Welcome. Um, make sure you comment, like the video. It's free, and it helps me out a lot. It only takes a second, and yeah, things aren't good right now. But people were really irritated when I said this, and I was like, I liked Last of Us. It was very good. It's a visually stunning show. It's beautiful. I lo I really liked it a lot. The acting, everything's there. The acting's great. The directing's great. The score is great. I think it's visually very pretty, and I really like the use of vegetation, fungus, life, but so much death. I really liked that. There's, I really liked uh, the symbolism, even in the very beginning when Joel gets, uh, when his daughter gets taken out and he gets hit in the watch, it's like, okay, well, that's when time stopped for him. You get what I'm saying? Is when his daughter goes out. So there were some things that it did very good. It was very nuanced with that. But I do have a whole theory about HBO and why Euphoria is going to tank everything for us. Let's stick with Last of Us right now. This show at points was a slog. I don't care what anybody says. I loved it, I thought it was very good, but it was so slow and boring at points that it put me to sleep. Other than that, I'm like, if you just would have cut it down a little bit in, in, in these places, you could have streamlined it and it would have been like bing, bang, boom. Also, I didn't like 90% of the episodes having nothing happening for 40 minutes. I loved it. I, I loved the dialogue and everything and the characters, but I was like, you could have had a bit more going on here. That's all I'm saying. That's a nitpick, you know what I mean? But a few years ago, the big main executive producer guy who fought for Game of Thrones, who fought for Sopranos, who fought for Deadwood, who fought for all these big, giant, great things, these great stories to be told, he just left HBO. He just left, and so did some other people that were really big there. Now, right after that, they were like, House of the Dragon, uh, Sopranos, uh, Many Saints of Newark, Deadwood movie, all these prequels, and then we have like Last of Us, things like that. Those are, they have built in audiences already, from the video game, from whatever. They're already uh, standing IP on their own, you know what I mean? So you know those fans are going to come back. I'll be more interested to see what HBO does in the next five years, because I'm like, okay, you're kind of running out of prequel stuff, what, what are we doing here? But I did love Pedro Pascal, my only fear is that people are going to get Pedro Pascal fatigue, because he's in everything, and I don't want that to happen, because he's great. Bella Ramsey, she was fantastic. Uh... Like I said, I was, there was things in this I really loved, and I really did like this show. I'm not smack-talking it. I thought it was very good. But now here's where the Euphoria part comes in, because Euphoria is trash. It's good-looking trash. That's not a good show. And it's okay to like things that aren't good, but Euphoria is some weird, not-good garbage. Like, it, it literally, tell me, tell me what the conflict is in Euphoria. Tell me who the bad guy is. Tell me what the goal is. Who is blackmailing dads and all this craziness? That, the only reason I watched that show was because I had COVID, and I, had to, and I cranked it out. If I don't know... I'm watching a finale, that's a problem. And twice with Euphoria, I was like, this is the finale? And then finally we have this drug dealer beat the brakes off somebody and I'm like, oh good, a hero emerges. That didn't, but then I was just like, everybody else sucks. Every character sucks in that show. I have a whole video talking about it. They're all mean, they're all rude, they're all selfish. I don't like none of them. Who cares about any of them? But HBO got a taste of the, of the teen market and how much money that is. There's a reason why Disney does what it does. Kids are bank, whether they're 5 or 14. If you have a little kid, how many Moana t-shirts did you have to buy? Or still have to? Or Frozen? Or whatever it is. Kids are bank. Kids are the money maker. Who do you think is making 25 TikTok edits of characters? Do you think a 30-year-old is doing that? No, a 14-year-old is. So there were things in Last of Us, like the episode with Ellie and her girlfriend, which was fine, but it felt shoehorned in, shoehorned in, and then I was like, oh wait, this isn't for Abby, this is for a 14-year-old to go, I relate to this. I don't see a problem with watching this with an older teen. My mom would have let us watch this. It's zombies and stuff, yeah. I mean, maybe that's a cultural thing, because I'm American, and it's kind of messed up, because we're like, violence, fine, but everything else, whoa, and it's dumb. But there's a reason why we pay for HBO, as adults. But with Euphoria, it's not good. It's popping because teens are watching it. Teens are all about it. Young adults are all about it. You feel me? That's why that's such a big thing right now. And I feel like HBO got a bit of a taste with Euphoria with that and then said, okay, let's dial everything down a little bit. Like, we'll still have the violence there when it really needs to be. We'll still have the swearing there when it needs to be. But even with House of the Dragon, look at that. There was, but we also, in the Game of Thrones books, we have dialogue, we have swearing, we have scenarios, we have them going to brothels and things like that. To, and so with House of the Dragon and the way Fire and Blood is wrote, it's like a historian in that world wrote it. So we don't have that dialogue between characters like in A Song of Ice and Fire. So they have a little more give there. And I applauded them. I was like, there's less swearing. They're writing better. They're writing more. And I appreciate that. You're not just throwing titties at me because to distract me from your writing. I appreciate that. Sometimes violence, nudity, sex, sometimes those things do have a reason in the story. So I'm not hating on things that use it well. I'm hating on things that use it gratuitously and use it like a crutch. Now, Last of Us doesn't do that. 
but this is what I, and I'm not saying those things have to be there. What I'm saying is, I think HBO went, well, let's teeter on the line of, a parent could watch this with their 15, 16, 17 year old, so let's put some really big stuff at the end, let's put some really good kills of with zombies, and, and like I said, I'm not taking anything away from it, I'm just saying there seems to be a pattern here, and it's not just with Last of Us. And it's not that House of the Dragon didn't have very graphic things in it or whatever. It did. But I was explaining it this way. When Air Game of Thrones was airing, even though I read the books, I don't know if I'd want a 10-year-old to walk in and be like, oh, can you open up my new terrain bar for me? I'd be like, oh, let's get you out of here because this is airing and I don't know what it's going to show or say. With this or other, with, even, even House of the Dragon stuff, there wasn't as much going on, so I wouldn't have panicked as much to get you out of the room. Does that... Is that a good way to explain it? I feel like there's just, I feel like they turned it down just a little bit when it came to things. And then when it had to have the big stuff, it was there. But I could definitely see a parent going, well, oh, well, that was only that one thing, you know? My mom bought me the Kill Bill set when I was 12, and my uncle was mortified. He was like, you really got her that? And my mom was like, tell me what's so bad in it. Besides the over the top blood in the first one, what's so bad about Kill Bill for her to watch at 11, 12, 13? And yeah, that might be a cultural thing, but I'm just saying, like, I'd watch this with a 13-year-old, for sure. Maybe I, but I'm not a parent, so who knows? Like, I definitely think, <laughs> I definitely think not only are these things more accessible, so a kid could accidentally come home and click a button and it's on because of streaming services. So I definitely think things have toned back. I think that's a huge factor, and I think it's because of Euphoria, and Euphoria giving HBO that taste of, this is, I mean, you had Juggernauts before, you had Game of Thrones, you had Sopranos. But that ain't nothing like some stuff Disney, and that ain't no Frozen, that ain't no Moana, you know what I mean? So when you have Euphoria and you have all these teens obsessed with it, and that's free marketing, they'll make 25 edits on TikTok. You don't gotta do commercials, because the teenagers will all do it for you. And they're making YouTube shorts, and they're making everything about that. So it's like, it's free, and, it's, and it banks. And so I understand it, and I don't mind it if you do it well, but at the same time, I kind of do mind it, because I pay for HBO, because I'm a grown-ass adult. And this is all a theory. I could be completely wrong. But I definitely do think that's the case with some of these things. And especially with those producers and stuff leaving a few years ago. And then all of a sudden we have all these prequels and all this stuff based off existing IPs. And I'm like, these already have built-in fan bases. So what are we going to do after that? Tell me what you thought of Last of Us. I thought it was very good. I liked it. I just wasn't like, yeah. And I, it was sluggish. It was sluggish at points. But that's okay. It doesn't mean it's bad. It was just sluggish at points. They should just tighten it up a little bit. That's all. That's all I'm saying. Everything else was great. It is great. It's very good. I just And honestly, I do think Pedro Pascal should be... I don't think he should win. I think that an Interview with a Vampire should sweep the Emmys next year. But I do think that Pedro Pascal should be nominated. And probably Bella Ramsey, too, but also she shouldn't win. But I'm just saying, they, they, nominations matter. Being acknowledged matters. But I definitely think he should be acknowledged. That's for sure. But I'm Abby with Motor City Nerds. Make sure you comment, subscribe, share. It really helps me out a lot. And it's Succession Day! I'm on OnlyF, I'm on TikTok, I'm on Instagram, I'm on all the things down below. Go check them out.